Hi and welcome to Popeye Studios, episode 42. So I'm here on my own at the moment, no idea where Mrs Breaker is, but it is very quiet and I can enjoy a nice warm drink. Anyway, I've been really, really busy uh, working on the dread bike. So I'm going to give you some updates on that and we're going to start actually with the fairing and the eagle. Right, I'm just, uh, I'm just contemplating at the moment, thinking about what else needs to work on the dread bike. So we've got the, we've got the panels on. Seat's not on yet, so I'm gonna have to get the sewing machine out and uh, come up with something for that. Got the sort of the carbon fiber effects, a couple of the instruments, nothing's wired in yet, none of the electronics are done. Um, but it's looking, it's looking good. The guns have all got to be made up. Obviously we've got this, um, so you can see there the guns, this unit will kind of fit in here like this. And inside here, these are going to be working airsoft guns. So there's a mechanism is going in now. Um, so there's still, you know, there's an awful lot to do on that. Uh, all the inner lining on the fairing has got to go in. Because it obviously got, it needs to look, it needs to look nicer. Um, so yeah, it's looking good. It's, there's a lot of work to do yet. Okay, so the Eagle. Um, there's still a lot more work to do on the Eagle, but it looks like it will line up really nicely. I was a bit worried that it was going to be too big, but I think the, the size is about right. It's got to be iconic. It's got to, it's got to be a statement, which of course, once the shield is in, it certainly will be. Um, still a lot more sanding down and priming and all sorts to do on this thing. I say this thing, because I much prefer to work with metal than I do with sort of fiberglass, but anyway, it's going to look good. Right, so that was the fairing, still loads to do on that, and the eagle. Um, I must admit that eagle was a little bit of a pain. Um, design might change a bit, not too sure, but anyway. So next, we're gonna have a look at the electronics. Right, so we're back out with the dread bike. We've done, dread bike has had loads of sort of extra bits done on it, but we're basically gonna work on the electronics, and this is where it all gets a bit kind of confusing for people. It all looks really, really messy, but it will all be tidied up, cables all tidied back, and obviously everything needs to, some of these brackets will need priming up. But basically, in essence, what we've got here is two electronic circuits, one main circuit for the bike, which runs off a small motorcycle battery. So the motorcycle will start and uh, run its electronic systems. Now the bike itself doesn't have any lights. All the lighting and all the extras that have been added go through an auxiliary battery, which is stored at the back, and basically, in essence, the way this works is the power from that battery comes in through a main feed, which comes into a kill switch, which is down here, just underneath, you can see underneath the fairing down here, big red kill switch. That kill switch then comes through and powers up this fuse box here. And this fuse box will then provide power to a switch system, which is mounted on the front of the bike. From the switch system, we then will plug in our LED lighting, our horns, our sirens, our power units, and all our other bits and pieces. So everything is controlled through independent switches. So let me explain how the wiring works on the dread bike. I know it looked very complicated, but let me draw it out here and, it, and this will simplify it. So what we have here is we have the battery. And the battery is 12 volts. And we have a positive and we have a negative on the battery. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to take this negative off to this symbol. This is our earth. And then we're going to come from the positive through a big kill switch. And what this does, it isolates the battery from all the other electronics on the vehicle when we switch it. The power then comes down and it goes into our fuse box. Now, our fuse box has got multiple fuses. We have the input stage and we have the output stage. And what we're going to do is bridge all of the inputs together into 12 volts. We've got 12 volts coming, flowing into the fuse box. On this end of the fuse box, this is the fused section. We're going to come out of fuse number one. We're going to go to a switch. And let's say we're going to control, I don't know, the horn. Off the horn, we'll have an earth coming away. And you can see now that the 12 volts flows through the kill switch into the fuse, through the fuse, into the switch which controls the item, 
and then the horn. Now for the horn, for example, we might actually put a secondary switch in, which might be a little push button switch. So when you hit that push button switch, it activates the horn. This switch just activates the circuit. Give you another example, come down here, another switch. We might go to one of the LEDs and then that will have an earth coming off as well. So when the switch is activated, the LED is given power and it works. Now in some vehicles, all of the earths, these ones here, are connected together via the chassis. Some vehicle manufacturers do this. Might be that the wires are bolted to the chassis. The chassis is made of metal, so it provides continuity, provides an earth circuit. Negatives to that is if you get any corrosion in that earth circuit, the over you know age of the vehicle, the earths will, could then fail, and then you'd have to sort of try to search for a problem. If my solution, what I tend to do, is I have a big block and I connect all my earths into this block. Advantage are I control the wiring, good wiring, no issues with continuity. Disadvantage is it's a little bit more expensive because I'm using more wiring. But for a motorcycle, that's not really an issue because it's a small area. So you can see 12 volt system. You have the earth going to a multi-block comes out through a kill switch into the fuse box. The fuse box provides each item with power. And that's really how the system works. Now, to charge the battery, we have a power con or speak on connector, which has a positive and a negative connection. This is then plugged into the charger. So the charger goes into here. The earth comes up and is connected permanently to the battery. And then here we have basically a positive feed coming in via a fuse. This will be a small rated fuse, probably a two amp fuse or a three amp fuse, because there wouldn't really be much more current flowing through that. We could even, if we had a spare fuse here, we could actually do that through the main fuse box. So we could feed our current into the battery that way if we wanted to, if we had a spare fuse. But obviously, this is the way I tend to do it on the, uh, on the dread bike. So there you have it, simple, basic, wiring layout of what is happening on the dread bike. There will be more switches because the guns will also be powered up on probably handlebar based switches on a rocker switch. Now we've covered things like LEDs and basic bits and pieces for connecting up all the electronics. One thing I didn't mention was guns. Now they're not working guns, they're just kind of, they're, they're, they're airsoft guns which they've got very powerful motors in them. The problem we would have if we connected the guns straight into the fuse box via a switch, we probably end up melting the contacts within the switch. Now the reason for that is these switches generally only are rated at 20 or 30 amps. LEDs and the like, don't, they just don't draw that much current, so the switch is fine just to turn it on and turn it off. The guns could draw up to 40 amps of current from the battery. So if we just took the guns and fed it straight to the switch, we turn the switch on, we damage the contacts. So we need a way to activate the guns via the switch without melting the switch. And this is where we introduce one of these things. This is called a relay. Two different types there, but this is the kind that we use. So let's draw it out. I'm gonna draw it in red, which makes it easier to see. And on a relay, on the back of the relay, you've got a number of pins. I'm gonna draw them like this and these pins are numbered. We have pin 30, pin 87, pin 85, and pin 86. Now, this is a very clever little gadget, a relay. What it allows us to do is relay the power from the fuse box to the guns without damaging the switch. So imagine, I mean, this is going to look a little bit messy, but what we've got here is we're going to feed power into terminal 30. So we're going to come off fuse. We're going to feed along here. We're going to put power into terminal 30 from the fuse box. The guns, and these are the positives remember, are going to be connected directly to terminal 87. Remember, the guns have got their earth that go off. The, the relay itself needs an earth, so we come off terminal 85 to an earth. That leaves us with terminal 86. Now what we're going to do is, I'm going to go the other way around this time, I'm going to come up here Come along here via a switch into terminal 86. And what's going to happen now is when we turn that switch on, it's going to energize the relay. 
And what that's then going to do, once the relay is energized, it connects terminal 30 and terminal 87, which of course, as you can see here, would provide power straight through to the guns. But it keeps the switch circuit independent of the main flow of current, which is how you protect smaller rated switches when you're switching higher current devices. You use a relay. Here, you can see it from the main battery, I've routed an earth, which is a big chunky black wire coming through here. All the earths from everything, LEDs, everything, will come to this point. So the earth will be, a, will be a fixed point. I won't be using the earth on the bike or the chassis on the bike. I always put my own earth systems in because that way you don't, you eliminate any problems. And then, as I said, all the positives that are coming from different wires will be routed straight to the switches, which will then go via the fuse. And that's how it will be provided with its power. So you can see here, I'm, being, I'm soldering up all the switches. And what I've got is I've got a fused feed coming into one of the terminals on the switch. And then the output from the switch goes to the particular device, whether that's an LED or a horn or a radio or... So for example, here, you can see the output to the radio and that will be coming into that power switch there. And that's fed by 12 volts, which comes from the fuse box. And then I set the appropriate fuse in the fuse box and then feeding the fuse box will be 12 volts. So finally, um, we did a little bit of work on the guns. Now they're not finished yet. And again, it, this is a very complicated thing to sort of sort out. There's obviously a little bit more detailing on the Eagle has been done, detailing on the bodywork. In fact, loads more, have a look. Right, so I'm just working on the guns here. So um, basically kind of distressing them, making them look, well, basically like guns. So these are the gun pods that go onto the side of the dread bike. So all I'm doing is working with the black paint and working with silver paint and giving it this kind of like um, burnt, dirty sort of look. A little technique here, cotton bud and get flash effects like that. Right, we're going to leave you with some uh, updated pictures on the dread bike. And uh... oh, am I too late? Sorry, I was painting away on the horn of Erebor, just giving it a varnish. That's such smelly stuff. Are you ready to go? The show's done. I've recorded it. It's all done. Yeah. All you've got to do is say, don't forget to subscribe, hit the bell and goodbye. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the bell. Ding, 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 ding. ding. Bye. Bye. <laughs>